Hey everybody, I wanted to make a quick bite episode real quick because uh, I don't have enough time to make a full-blown episode. The full-blown episode is going to be about black holes, but this quick bite episode is going to be about Europa. So I hope you all had a wonderful holiday season. I just came back from one of the busiest holiday seasons I've ever experienced in my life. And it wasn't even that holly and jolly, you know? Like, I wasn't really in the Christmas spirit, which sucked, you know? But anyway, we're back. We're going to go into some fun facts about Europa, one of my favorite celestial bodies, and uh, then we'll get into some black hole stuff uh, next week. So, or the week after that, because I, I'm going to try and do this like bi weekly. But anyway, we'll get into it eventually. So, let's go. Europa. Europa is Jupiter's fourth largest natural satellite and sixth largest moon in the solar system. Europa is a fantastic frigid world of ice with a probable ocean that could hold twice as much water as all of Earth's oceans combined. NASA has a planned mission which has been named the Europa Clipper, which is going to perform multiple flybys of Europa while it stays in orbit around Jupiter. So in celebration of the upcoming mission in 2024, here are some need to know facts about Europa and its makeup as a celestial body. So small Europa facts. The average surface temperature is minus 160 degrees Celsius, that is minus 260 degrees Fahrenheit. The average distance from the sun is about 5.2 astronomical units, AU. The diameter is around 1,940 miles, that is 3,100 kilometers, slightly smaller than Earth's moon. Volume is around 15.9 billion cubic kilometers, which is 3.8 billion cubic miles. Solar day is 3.5 Earth days. Solar year is about 12 Earth years. An atmosphere is extremely tenuous, mostly oxygen. And that is it for our quick little facts about Europa. Now the discovery of Europa is quite interesting. No one knows what day Galileo actually discovered Europa because of his crappy telescope, all right? This man was using a crap telescope. He was using your 20 buck thrift store telescope, all right? And he discovered it on January 8th, 1610. However, it is possible he could have discovered it a day earlier on January 7th. Still, he couldn't differentiate between Io, another one of Jupiter's moons, and Europa because he was using a low-powered telescope. Thrift store telescope, all right? He later observed and found out for himself that they were two separate natural satellites and celestial bodies. Now, this discovery was a huge one in the religious realm because the Catholic and Christian churches believed that the Earth was the center of everything, that everything orbited the Earth in the geocentric model. This was an idea that was also supported by Aristotle and Ptolemy, but uh, Galileo finding these other celestial bodies orbiting their planets and observing that Venus went through phases similar to our moon gave us strong evidence against the geocentric model and pointed towards Nicholas Copernicus' heliocentric model where everything orbits the sun in our solar system. The characteristics of Europa, just as interesting as its discovery, if not more interesting. The characteristics of this natural satellite are quite attractive to most astronomers and astrobiologists due to its high probability of water beneath its icy surface. Europa has almost all the fundamental chemistry needed to produce life, which is the ticket that interests all scientists around the globe. However, it gets blasted by radiation from Jupiter, like it gets uh, several doses of radiation uh, from Jupiter quite often. So what life could survive? The theories are it has a highly sustainable ocean life fueled by the radiation from Jupiter rather than the process of photosynthesis. So the ocean life on Europa could be powered by chemical reactions rather than the photosynthesis we see here on Earth. There's a very high expectation that Europa has water underneath its surface. So suggested by the assumed vapor plumes found by the Hubble Space Telescope that they're still looking into, but that isn't the only thing that suggests a giant body of water under the surface of ice. The cracks also give us a tad bit of a hint as well. 
The surface of Europa is covered in cracks, which most believe is caused by tidal forces on the possible oceans deep below the surface. It's a high probability and possibility that when Europa orbits Jupiter, it becomes close to the planet and the ocean rises and falls in certain areas, causing the cracks we see in the ice on the natural satellite surface. Other interesting characteristics about Europa are the fact that it has fluctuations in its magnetic field, which indicate a conductor of some kind. Also, another exciting thing about Europa is that in 2014 it was found that it could possibly host a form of plate tectonics. Earth is the only known body in the solar system with a dynamic crust, which is considered necessary and very helpful for the development and evolution of life on our planet. So that is all we have to talk about. We would like to say that we believe overall Europa is pretty stellar. Come back and uh, you'll hear more about black holes next time. I swear the episodes will be longer. This is just a quick bite episode and I'm really excited for the next episode to come out about black holes and us to get through that series together. I'll see you space cadets around. Happy New Year!